Here we're gonna look at a nice problem from the 2011 Philippine Mathematics Olympiad. So it's a functional equation, and I tend to like functional equations. I just started kind of practicing them with this channel, and I think they're pretty fun. So what we wanna do is find all functions from the real numbers to the real numbers, such that for all real numbers x, we have f of f of x plus x times f of x equals one. So I'll give you guys a couple of hints if you wanna try this problem before we look at a solution, and then we'll jump into a solution. So my first hint is really typical for all functional equation type problems, and that's to take some nice values for x and then just play around with it. So what are nice values? Well, I would say x equals zero, one, two, negative one, so on and so forth. Those are nice values for x. And really, the nice values depend on the structure of the functional equation, so keep that in mind as well. And then my second hint, well, this is really a good hint for all math problems, and that is don't be afraid. Don't be afraid of working on it for a long time and possibly failing, and also don't be afraid of coming up with a solution that seems wrong but might be correct. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at a solution. So hopefully those hints were helpful. Now we're ready to jump into a solution. And we'll jump into our solution using our first hint, which is to take nice values for x. And I think x equals zero is maybe the nicest value to start off with because we have this x which is floating outside of the function. Okay, so let's see what we get if we set x equal to zero. So x equal to zero into the functional equation gives us f evaluated at f of zero plus zero times f of zero equals one, but we can clearly get rid of that zero times f of zero. So we immediately have a value for the function. Now it's not really that helpful of a value at the moment because we know f evaluated at f of zero equals one, but at least it's a start. And this gives us actually a great hint that our next substitution should be x equals f of zero. Since we know how to decompose repeated applications of f on the number zero. Okay, so let's see what that gives us. So that's going to give us f of f of f of zero, but we know that's going to be f of one. So here, let's write that down, and then we will remind ourselves that that comes from taking f of f of f of zero, like that. Great, and that's the first term right here. The next we'll have that this is plus x, in this case x is f of zero, times f of x, but f of x is gonna be f of f of zero, but that's just one, so we can just write that as times one, and keep in mind that this one, which is hidden right here, is actually f of f of zero, and we know that value from our first step. Okay, so next, we know that this is equal to the number one. Next, we will set x equal to one, and the motivation for that is we see f of one right here. So let's see what we get from setting x equal to one. So that's gonna give us f evaluated at f of one, plus f of one times one from this right here equals one, like that. But notice this gives us a nice system of equations where we can think about our three variables as being f of f of one, f of one, and f of zero. But now by subtracting these two equations, it's pretty easy to see that f evaluated at f of one is equal to f evaluated at zero. And that also gives us some motivation for what our next substitution should be. Perhaps it should be x equals f evaluated at one. So let's see what we get throwing that into our functional equation. So our first object will be f of f of f of one. But notice f of f of one is zero. So in fact, it's just f of f of zero, which is one. So let's write that down and then we'll expand this as it looks exactly in the functional equation. Where again, we use the fact that this inner part is f of zero, and then our original equation tells us that that is equal to one. Okay, good. But now this is gonna be plus f of one, that's x, times f of f of one, but that is f of zero from this here, so we have f of one times f of zero, 
Again, this term right here comes from f of f of one. And then over on the right hand side of the equation, we have this is equal to one. But now notice the ones will cancel from both sides of the equation. And we end up with f of one times f of zero equals zero, which brings us to two cases, f of one equals zero or f of zero equals zero. So I'll actually clean this board up and we'll start with the necessary facts to finish it off, including those two. So in the last board, we derived the following equations involving evaluating this function at zero, one, and then multiple compositions of this function at zero and one. We also figured out that f of zero times f of one was zero, so that means one of them was at least zero. So here, we'll break this into two cases. The first one is f of zero is zero, and the second case is f of one equals zero. And we'll see what each of these cases imply. So we'll start off with this part right here, which is f of zero equals zero. So notice if f of zero equals zero, by this equation right here, we have f of one equals one. Okay. But then by this equation right here, we have f of f of one equals f of zero, which is zero. Okay. But also we have f of one equals one. So we can plug this in here and we see that f of one equals zero. So simultaneously, we have f of one equals one and f of one equals zero. So that's a contradiction, which means this case is impossible. So let's jump to the second case, and that's the case when f of one equals zero. So again, if f of one equals zero, that tells us that f of zero equals one by this equation right here. But now combining these two equations with this one right here, we'll see that something goes wrong. So notice that we'll have one equals f of f of zero equals f of one equals zero. So again, we get one equals zero a similar contradiction to what we got right here. So in other words, we've got a contradiction. So the two only possible cases brought us to a contradiction, which means finding all functions satisfying this rule is impossible. Well, we did find all of the functions, it's just that there are no functions. And that's a good place to stop.